1980, when I was younger than now, what we did to solve this kind of problem was to write a Fortran program, this kind of Fortran program, okay? So we write by hand the program, we have to punch cards and to put them in the computer. And it was a very cumbersome work, but it was the way we did it. Fortran program, you know, Fortran is a very old language. But what happens is that after 1980, there is a revolution in numerical computation. It was possible for people to write x equal this simple equation, like you write it by hand, by using an interpreter that was an interface between the libraries, numerical libraries, and the user. And this was made by people making a program called MATLAB. At this time, MATLAB was written in Fortran, and it was a domain public program, completely free, more than free. Uh, at the same time, at INRIA, the French Research Institute for Computer Science and Control, a government institute in France, in this, at the same time, in 1980, based on this domain public MATLAB program, was made another kind of program called Blaze, then called Basil, then sold by a subsidiary at INRIA. And I'm explaining that to tell you that the reason why Scilab is so close to MATLAB is that the Scilab is based on the original MATLAB. So the philosophy, so the programming language, so everything is very close. But time after time, they separate. So what happens to this kind of program is that it didn't work very well. It was not very well uh, selling Basil and the other software like that, because time after time, all the other softwares died. Because MATLAB changed, were written in C, and it be began a, a proprietary program, and a very good one, and all the other died. So this Blaze, then Basil program, came back to INRIA in 1990, and people from INRIA were wondering, what do we do with that? There is now a standard called MATLAB. MATLAB is used by everybody. And so, if you sell Scilab, we are not going to sell one Scilab. So the idea was, in 1994, to give it, to give it to the world and to everybody. You can see that in 1994, it's the beginning of uh, what we call free and open source program. It was only the beginning, so we put it for free on the internet. So what is the situation today? I'm talking about software for scientific numerical computation. This kind of software, not specialized software. I'm not talking about software specialized in statistics, in finite elements, in mechanics, but all purpose numerical computation. This kind of software I use everywhere today, in universities and in company. And the situation now is very simple. There is only one such kind of program. It's called MATLAB. It's not free, it's proprietary, and it's very, very expensive. So we propose an alternative. The alternative is Scilab Psychos, MATLAB Simulink, Scilab Psychos, which is free, free of charge, and open source since 1994. So, I wanted to, to tell you this small story to explain why Scilab exists now. We thought that the only way for us to survive was to give Scilab. So, now I will present the structure around Scilab um, and around uh, Scilab Psychos, which is, we call it, an open source numerical computation platform. So, I will speak about Scilab Consortium, the switcher around Scilab, a little about Scilab software, very briefly, because uh, my colleague will speak a lot about the software, 
The results, is there any results, and a very small conclusion. The problem is that, that we need to ensure a future for the software. A software can cannot rely only on a few people in a research institute. And what people wanted is to have development know who is developing the software, is there maintenance, is there assistance, promotion, and so on. So the only way to do that was to ensure the future is to group people around Scilab. So to group academics and companies. And to make all the other kind of job, we need to make a team. And at this time of the story, I need to speak about a very bad thing. And this bad thing, I'm sorry, is money. So we need to have money. We need to have funding. Because we need to have a team dedicated completely to the development of Scilab software. For that, we need to hire people. So hiring people means we need to pay them because people need to drink, need to eat. So the phantasm saying that you can make software like this without paying anybody and without no money is not true. I'm sorry, we need money. And the money for making the team came from the companies and the academics around Scilab and by INRIA. For what doing this? Because our software is open source. Our software is free of charge. It's given like this. But we want that this software be a professional software, like any kind of other software that you can pay. And for that, we need to have a high quality and professional open source software. It's the reason why we wanted to have a team, a dedicated team, to develop and take in charge this software. So we can say that today Scilab is a professional software. But it's free of charge and open source. So the consortium was created in 2003 with 10 members, and now it has 25 members. All the members give money in order to hire people in the team to make promotion and so on. Uh, you can see here that there are uh, many French companies, a few uh, German, Switzerland, and Italian companies, and European one. Uh, car makers like Peugeot and Renault. You can see also very big companies like EADS with the, the European consortium making Airbus, for instance. The CNES, which is the, uh, the national uh, institute uh, for rockets, Ariane. EDF, French company for electricity. Thales, the defense company and uh, another uh, company, very big and very small also, that are part of Scilab Consortium. This is very important because we can see here that Scilab is mainly used like MATLAB in company making cars, making planes, making rockets, in defense and in energy. All these kind of domains use a lot software like MATLAB and Scilab. So, who is in charge of Scilab today? So the key players of Scilab first is INRIA, because INRIA hosts, hosts Scilab Consortium. Okay? It's a legal responsibility. The Scilab Consortium has not, is not a legal entity. It's INRIA today. And it gives a lot of money. It funds five positions in the team. And then the funding of Scilab Consortium were Companies give money. People say, why giving money to have a free software? Because everybody can go on the internet and get Scilab. So why I am going, me, to give money for that? Because I can take it for free. It's a very interesting question, very, very hard to answer. The only answer we found is, OK, you don't want to get money. So there is no Scilab. So if you want to have an alternative to MATLAB, if you want to have a software, a high quality software comparable to MATLAB, you need to give money. And more than that, you will be in charge of the future of Scilab. So today, 
the Scilab is taken in charge by Scilab Consortium, not Inolia, not Researcher. Scilab Consortium decides about the future of Scilab, the future development, and so on. So there is a team I was talking about. The team, with the help of external developers, has 10 people today in the team. It's not enough. We hope to have more people in the future, and I think that we have more uh, 12 or 13 uh, very soon. Okay? So we are the, this is the team at Inria Rocancourt making Scilab today. This team deals of the kernel of Scilab. What I am talking about kernel is the Scilab you get on the internet. It's a very big kernel because there are a lot of functionalities. But in fact, it's not all the kind of toolboxes you can find in the world or in any domain. We are not competent to do that. So we only uh, take in charge this big kernel we call Scilab. And I'm talking about this big kernel, so we have also a lot of contribution. And we need to have a lot of toolbox in the future. We already have, but we need to have more. And for that, you can play a role in Scilab. So, very simple thing. How can you use Scilab? Scilab is very easy to use. I use Scilab for making additions and multiplications, like a supercalculator, because it's very easy to do. You can also use it as a calculation engine. You have your software, you put Scilab in it, and you use Scilab in the software to make computations. You don't even see Scilab anymore, but you use it, and you can make toolboxes. So, the advantage of a software like MATLAB is that when you use Scilab, you use all the functionalities of Scilab. There are 1,400 functions in Scilab. You can use them. And you have free a language, very simple to use, very simple to use for engineers. It's a language made for making matrix computations. I think that is an awful language for computer scientists. But we don't care. It's very easy to use. And you have the interpreter. So it's very simple to, to make things like that in Scilab. Imagine that you made your own algorithms or in any domain in C program, and you want to to give it to, to the world, a very simple way to do is to make it as a toolbox of Scilab, and you use a Scilab vector to be used in the world. But all I say here can be said also for MATLAB. But now there is a difference, and the difference is the fact that Scilab is open source, and Scilab is free of charge. This is that if you develop a big software based on MATLAB and you distribute it on every computer when you put your software, you need to have MATLAB. So you need to pay for it. With Scilab, you don't need because it's free. As Scilab is open source and there is a functionality or something you don't like or you want to change or you want to add, you can modify Scilab kernel. For instance, add data type or things like that. And you have the complete control of the software because we have a source. In, uh, in domains like, like defense or military uh, domains, it's very important not to be dependent on a black box. You don't know what is in the black box, and you are completely linked, bound to the proprietary of the software. I told you broad spectrum works under every kind of computers, and it came with already a large, large number of toolboxes for making graphics, for making simulation, for making uh, control, optimization, signal processing, statistics, and so on. And you already have a number of functions in Scilab when you get it. So Psychos, you know that Simulink uh, in MATLAB, we have Psychos in Scilab. 
uh, Ramin will take, talk about Psychos later, but it's very important because this is a software that is used a lot for, with car, car makers and plane makers and so on. They are able to, to model and to simulate all, all the kinds of uh, physics and the dynamic physics of a car or a plane using Psychos or Simulink. The latest Scilab version is the Scilab 4.1 from December 2006. Well, what is important in this uh, latest version is the Windows version first, that is improved and works now very fast and very well. The graphics, that is now completely mature. You know, at the beginning in 2003, we had an old graphics and we changed it completely. It took them, took us a long time to do that because it was very complicated to do. And now we have uh, object, a graphic with object, where we can uh, access of a property of each part of the object in the graphics. And we have also a graphics editor, which allow to, when you have a graphics, to change interactively of the parts of a graphics. And I told you that our Scilab language is very similar to MATLAB language, but it's not exactly the same. There is difference of syntax and semantics. So what we did is that we made a lot of uh, very easy to use functions for graphics, which are exactly the same as MATLAB function, like plot, like surf, like bar, like pi, and so on. So for people using MATLAB, it's very simple to use graphics in Scilab because it's exactly for the, the very important function is exactly the same syntax and semantics as in MATLAB. And you should know that more than 70% of people using MATLAB in the world only get data and make visualization by using graphics. So this is very important to do that. The problem with uh, Scilab is that we don't sell anything. So we don't have a list of customers. So the only way to, to know if Scilab is used is to see how many people are downloading Scilab from a website. I know that a lot of people say that this has no meaning because we don't know what people do with Scilab or the, with the software the download. But we can see that since 2003 to now, there is a, a growth of a downloading of Scilab, which is very regular. And now we are about 23,000 downloads each month from our website. We can see here the percentage of uh, versions of Scilab uh, download. For instance, what is very interesting to see is that the version 4, 4.0 and 4.1 is more than 40%. So this means that there is an, a, a growth very important of the downloads of Scilab. We also have a website. Our website uh, is visited by a lot of people in the world. It's www.scilab.org. And now we have more than 2,000 distinct visitors a day. Well, I told you that Scilab comes from French, but other people using Scilab in the world? First, France is part of the world. So Scilab is used a lot in France by universities, by companies in Scilab consortium, and we have uh, many programs funded by French government where we participate, we give us money to the development of Scilab. In Europe, Scilab is used by companies and also used by an important project, European funded project. I will say just a few words because it would be important for the future. This project is called Artus and is for embedded system. It's a very important, it's the biggest project in embedded system for uh, Europe. 
And what is interesting is that in this project, we are, we'll do a very interesting thing, which is the generation of C code from Scilab programs. You write a Scilab program, and we'll be able to generate C code. But not a C code with the interpreter of Scilab or very big things, but very simple and standalone C code with a minimum number of functions of libraries needed for it. This is very important because this is can be used to put the code in a chip, in a FPGA or in a processor. So you write this in Scilab because it's easier to write this in Scilab than in C, and you generate C code very small directly in the processor. This is the beginning of, we already worked in this project a uh, few months ago, and I think we will have the first version at the end of this year. MATLAB is not able to do that. We go to China since 2001, and what we do in China is numerous conferences about Scilab, and since 2002, a contest. This is the yearly Scilab contest where a uh, student in China can make a toolbox for Scilab. And it's a way for Scilab to be known in China. Uh, in China, the situation is different, I think, than other countries because in 2001, nobody knew about Scilab in China. So since 2002, there is a Scilab early contest. In 2005, Scilab is used in secondary schools for making in mathematics, for statistics, for uh, algorithm. And there we, we discussed at the beginning of this year to create a partner consortium in China, a partner of Scilab consortium. Since 2006, we are doing the same thing in Japan, collaboration with the Institute and the Scilab contest in Japan. It was uh, held in 2006 and it is in 2007 now. India is the beginning, uh, I think, of a very big story. And with North America, we have a collaboration with National Instruments. National Instruments, the company who sell cards and the for, for getting uh, data from sensors and get them on a PC. And then they sell a software called LabVIEW. This LabVIEW software uh, is able to, to get the data and to treat them. But they don't have the full power of a software like Scilab. So we collaborate with them in order to have an interface between LabVIEW and Scilab. LabVIEW is a software used everywhere in the world. So if people need in the future to make computation, they will choose Scilab because of the interface and it's free. We, have, we are also involved with national instruments and other companies in what we call the Numerical Mathematic Consortium. This Numerical Mathematic Consortium is a consortium for the standardization of the semantics of the mathematical function for numerical computation. When you use MATLAB, Scilab, Mathematica, MathCAD, and every time the semantics is not the same. So, so the, the idea is to change this. We also have many contributions now of people making contributions for Scilab. I don't want to, to go into all the, the items, but you should know that now a lot of people think about, ah, I made my algorithms. Why not put them into Scilab? And in the Scilab website, we have also a lot of toolboxes that you can download. <coughs> Conclusion? I would like to say that since 2003, Scilab is a success because now people, in academics people, and also industry, think that Scilab is a real professional product as it is that can use it as any kind of product. And that a lot of people using Scilab in the world. But a lot of work has to be done. We need to continue to improve Scilab, to improve the interface, to improve the documentation, to improve the numerical algorithms into Scilab. You need also to have a lot of contribution for Scilab in every domain. 
One difference between MATLAB and Scilab is that MATLAB has a lot of toolboxes in every domain. Scilab has not enough. And we need to continue to do the promotion for Scilab, like we are doing this in India, for instance. So to conclude, what we need is your help to help us adding new functionality, adding new toolboxes, and using Scilab. I think that is the only way for us to succeed and to make Scilab the most used numerical software in the world.